First let's see some basics. During descent of testes, there is also descent of a fold of peritoneum into the scrotum. This fold of peritoneum is called processus vaginalis. The part of processus vaginalis which covers the testes is tunica vaginalis. Processus vaginalis then starts to regress from the deep inguinal ring to just above the testes. This regressed part is called funicular process. Thus the connection between processus vaginalis and tunica vaginalis is now cut off. So hydrocele. Hydrocele is just an abnormal collection of serous fluid in tunica vaginalis. Let's see the etiological classification of hydrocele first. Hydrocele can be congenital which is present from birth or acquired which is acquired after birth. Acquired hydrocele is further classified into primary and secondary acquired hydrocele. First let's see about primary acquired hydrocele. Primary acquired hydrocele is due to defect in the absorption of fluid from tunica vaginalis. So the hydrocele sac is present around the testis like you see in this picture right here. This is called as vaginal hydrocele where the fluid is just collected into inside the tunica vaginalis and remember that it is the most common type of hydrocele. Now let's see about secondary acquired hydrocele. Secondary acquired hydrocele is due to secondary causes like epidermal orchitis which is the most common cause, torsion of testis, testicular tumors and trauma to testis. Here the pathology is excessive production of fluid inside tunica vaginalis. Remember that the most common cause of secondary acquired hydrocele is epidermal orchitis and the secondary acquired hydrocele also leads to vaginal hydrocele. We have seen the etiological classification. Now let's see the classification of hydrocele based on where the defect is. The four important types are vaginal hydrocele, congenital hydrocele, funicular hydrocele and infantile hydrocele. Now let's see each of them in a bit more detail. First, vaginal hydrocele. As told already, it is the most common type of hydrocele. Vaginal hydrocele can occur as a primary hydrocele or, or, or as secondary hydrocele, secondary to other causes like I discussed previously like epidermal orchitis. Primary hydrocele keeps enlarging and grow to a point where they become a tense large swelling, where secondary hydrocele are usually small, they are usually a small lax swelling. Now let us see some features of vaginal hydrocele. The first point is that you can get above the swelling in case of hydrocele, which means you can palpate the spermatic gauze structure separately above the swelling. This is because the swelling is present just inside the scrotum. This point helps us to differentiate it from inguinal hernia because inguinal hernia, in the case of inguinal hernia, it is an inguinoscrotal swelling. So you won't be able to feel the spermatic gauze structures separately at the root of scrotum so which means you, you won't be able to get above the swelling because the swelling arises from within the inguinal canal and descends into the scrotum so this is one point to differentiate from hydrocele from inguinal hernia vaginal hydrocele is a fluctuant swelling and it is often transillumination positive i've explained about fluctuation and transillumination in a bit more detail after a couple of slides so keep watching now congenital hydrocele is due to persistence of processus vaginalis. So there is a connection between the abdominal cavity and scrotum. This is because the processus vaginalis remains patent. Remember that congenital hydrocele is due to patent processus vaginalis. Congenital hernias can, hap ha can happen through this patent processus vaginalis in infants but it is very uncommon. If there is bilateral congenital hydrocele Always make sure to rule out ascites, which is presence of excess of free fluid in the abdominal cavity. Funicular hydrocele. Funicular hydrocele is when the funicular process is fused below the level of deep inguinal ring, resulting in an inguinal swelling alone. But it is separated from the tunica vaginalis, so it is just an inguinal swelling. There is no scrotal swelling, as there is no fluid collection in tunica vaginalis in case of funicular hydrocele. Infantile hydrocele is when the hydrocele sac extends still deep in vinyl ring. Remember that here there is no connection with the peritoneal cavity. And also the word infantile here has got nothing to do with infants. It is not specific to that age group. Before moving on, if you made till this part of the video, make sure to hit the like button before moving on any further. Now we have encysted hydrocele of spermatic cord. Here a small portion of the funicular process persists leading to small swelling in the spermatic cord as you can see in this picture right here. This swelling is freely mobile. 
Remember that there is a small portion of the funicular process which persists in case of insisted hydrocele or spermatic cord. Now we have a test here called a traction test. Now if you gently pull the testis downwards and try to move the swelling, the movement of the swelling will be restricted. This is called as traction test which is seen in insisted hydrocele of spermatic cord. Now let us see how to elicit fluctuation. First hold the swelling above and below with your two hands between thumb and other fingers like this. Now if you gently press from below, you can feel your fingers of the upper hand going away like you see here. This is how fluctuation is elicited. To elicit transillumination, place a torch on scrotum and turn it on. Then observe with a scrotoscope you can see brilliant transillumination in most of the hydrocele cases. In some cases of chronic hydrocele, transillumination might not be well appreciated. Now let's see some clinical features of hydrocele. In cases of primary hydrocele, like I told already, the swelling usually grows to a large size so that it becomes a tense, large swelling and it is usually a painless and gradually progressive swelling. A very important point is that the swelling starts in scrotum in case of hydrocele. This is another point to differentiate hydrocele from hernia because hernia is an inguinal scrotal swelling which starts from the inguinal region and descends into the scrotum whereas hydrocele starts in the scrotum. And in large hydrocele cases, the penis might be buried in scrotum. Now secondary hydrocele as I told already is usually a small lax swelling. And there can be history of testicular pain prior to the onset of swelling as seen in cases of epididymo orchitis and there can be history of sudden severe testicular pain as seen in cases of tor testicular torsion uh, which is common in young males and there can be history of testicular trauma before the onset of hydrocele. Now about epididymo orchitis as I told it is the most common cause of secondary acquired hydrocele and you have to remember the pathogen responsible for epididymo orchitis in young males, the most common cause is chlamydia trachomatis because they are in the sexually, re uh, sexually active age group. Whereas in old males, the common organism is E. coli because here the pathology is urine retention causing UTI and the pathogen being responsible for UTI is E. coli which in turn causes epididymo orchitis in this age group. Definitive treatment for hydrocele is surgery. Three common surgeries are plication, eversion and excision. The plication procedure is called as Lord's plication. Here basically we are going to plicate or fold that excess tunica vaginalis forming the sac. As you can see here the tunica vaginalis is being separated from testis. And multiple interrupted sutures have been put like as shown here. And pulled together. So the sac is plicated. This is called as Lord's plication. Jebulae's eversion procedure is when is where the sac is everted and anchored with sutures. This picture shows eversion of the tunica vaginalis sac and it being sutured to itself. Okay, it's been anchored with sutures as shown in this picture. First, the hydrocele sac is opened and then the sac is everted behind the testis and sutured. Now the testis is not covered by tunica vaginalis, so it is placed in a pouch prepared by dissection of facial planes of scrotum. Simple excision of sac is associated with high risk of bleeding, which can cause large scrotal hematoma. So it is not recommended and not commonly done these days. Now smash the like button and share this video to your friends and groups. Subscribe and press the bell icon and comment below if you need more such videos. Follow me on Instagram at medwitsmadesimple1 for shoutouts and updates and check out my second channel 2 minute doc by clicking on the 2 minute doc logo you see on the screen right here. Thank you and I'll see you in my next video.